Welcome back, my wealthy family. Once again, here at Rosendo Rodriguez, welding fly duck here at South Coast Welding Academy, Houston, Texas. On today's video, I'm gonna be showing you how to weld on a one inch plate stick out. Now, ladies and gentlemen, this is gonna be on a one G position. It's a very simple process, very simple techniques. Don't wanna miss it, stick around. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so come over here with me and, and look at this. So we have a one inch plate here and I need you to clean the back, the front, your walls. And all you got to do is just clean about maybe a half inch onto your plate all the way around. After that, ladies and gentlemen, go on ahead and put a 332 landing. Now be very careful because you don't want to have too much of a landing. Remember, you're welding on a thick plate. You're welding on an inch plate and it holds a lot of heat. I went ahead and got my spacer. It's a 7018 332. Get rid of the flux, bend it, and this is what you're gonna use as a spacer. So always check your landing and make sure that you have a good 332 landing all the way around on both plates. All right, so first thing first, we're gonna go ahead and flip them, have the backside up facing up. Grab your 332 spacer, stick it inside, just like that. All right, nice and even. And all you gotta do now is we're gonna uh, tack it, we're gonna tack it on the very corner on each side of the plate. Small little tacks. Now be very careful when you tack your plate. You want a long arc back and forth, a tiny bit, not too much, and watch your puddle connect. All right, so what you're gonna do now, you're gonna flip this back to the other side, just like this, and you're gonna tack your run of tabs. And they're gonna go against your plate on the very edge, just like that. You're gonna put a tack on the very corners, just like that, on both sides. Now, I recommend that you quarter your tacks, quarter them, so that it doesn't pull one direction, okay? Oh. And I'll show you how to do that. Now it doesn't have to be perfect because these are just runoff tabs, okay? All right, so ladies and gentlemen, now we have it nice and tacked at a 1G position. Now we're gonna go ahead and start doing our root. So what I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna start warming up my metal from way back here, and then I'm gonna start moving forward. So the technique that I'm gonna do, I'm gonna stitch forward, all right? I'm gonna go back out, punch on my keyhole, put pressure on it, drag a tiny bit into my gap and then pull it out a tiny bit, go back into my keyhole, push and drag. It's a tiny little oval. The angle that I'm gonna use here on my 6010, 1 8, I want you to lean the back part of the rod, lean it towards you 10, 15 degrees and then 10, 15 degrees to the right. So we're leading this way, we're going to the right. So 10, 15 degrees towards me, 10, 15 degrees to the right. And this is the angle that I want you to keep it the whole time. Now, be careful with your keyhole. If you see your keyhole shifting, then change your angle, adjust it so that you can keyhole right in the center. Now, uh, watch my angle at all times. Keep an eye on it. Uh, if you change it, just move it back to normal, right? Pretty simple. Now what I'm gonna do, I, I stopped maybe about halfway. I didn't have any more material. We're gonna feather it. When we feather, feather your keyhole nice and thin, all right? Feather it nice and thin. So now when I restart, I'm gonna go ahead and start warming up my metal from where I started grinding. So all I gotta do is go up and down or do tiny little circles, moving forward with the same angle at all times and as soon as you start keyholing, that's when you're gonna start doing your root. You're gonna start applying pressure and you're gonna start stitching back and forth, doing that little oval technique, okay? So, always keep an eye on your gap. Check your keyhole. Uh, if you don't have a nice keyhole, it's probably because you're not pushing enough, you're not penetrating enough, so you can turn out your amperage so that you can blow through a lot faster, a lot easier. Watch your gap. Um, if your gap is too wide or your keyhole is too wide, then you need to stop, 
change your amperage, turn it back down so that you can close your, your keyhole. All right, so ladies and gentlemen, we just did a root pass. Now we're gonna do a hot pass. Before you do your hot pass, make sure you ground down your root, have it nice and clean. Now, we're gonna be doing a hot pass at 130 amps, plus or minus. That means it's pretty hot, so be very careful. Now, the technique that we're gonna be using here with our 7018-18, all we're gonna be doing is going from wall to wall, pretty much zigzagging. We're gonna be zigzagging, and I need you to feel that wall on each side on the very tip of your rod. Zigzag it, zigzag it, touch both walls all the way through. All the way through. All the way through. No rush, same speed the whole time. Now I'm on my uh, run up tab. Keep going, keep going. All right, so let's go ahead and do our next pass. Our next pass is gonna be our fail pass and we're gonna be at 130 amps plus or minus. I check it out, ladies and gentlemen. All we're doing is going up and down, up and down. It almost looks like circles, but I'm just zigzagging. All the way through. Now remember, we're leading uh, 10 to 15 degrees going forward, and also 10 degrees, 10 to 15 uh, towards me the whole time. So, what are we going to do now? We're going to keep flushing it out all the way to the to the very edge until it's full. But now, from this point, you can actually start doing your stringers. What we're gonna do here, we're gonna have our puddle roughly an average, okay, and meet up halfway of our very first fill, the edge of your puddle, the edge of the top part of your puddle. The bottom part of our puddle is going to roughly bite into our wall. Now we're gonna do the one on top of it. Same concept, I'm gonna meet up 50%. Uh, at the bottom, and then I'm gonna make sure that the edge, the top edge of our puddle, touches the top wall. All right, first layer. Let's go ahead and start doing our next pass. Now we're gonna do our next uh, pass, our next layer. Same concept, same idea. If you still see that, you can still do two uh, stringers right next to each other. By all means, go ahead and do that. As long as you're not leaving any slag or or any lack of fusion between them or any of that, any valleys. So. Keep everything nice and tight. So if you can do two more on top, do two more. If you can fit three, then fit three. All right, so let's go ahead and start doing our next pass. Our next pass is gonna be right on top. This is where it starts to get boring, but be careful, pay attention to what I'm doing here. I focus on my posture, focus on my technique. Listen to what I'm telling you. Keep feeding at all times. Don't rush anything. Uh, proper stacking. All right, so. We're moving up now. We're actually maybe about halfway already. Pretty simple. Now, I want to tell you something. I want to show you something that sometimes, you know, we're not all perfect. No one's perfect. Uh, sometimes you might see that you're probably putting more metal on one side than the other side. So eventually you're going to start uh, stacking or growing uneven. It's not a problem. Do not worry. Do not hesitate. All you got to do is even it out. All right, so ladies and gentlemen, we're almost done here. So we're slightly below flush. Now, since you're using a 1 8 a 7018 1/8, you can actually go ahead and cap it a little bit under flush. Uh, the way I always do it, I always try to have it nicely flush. The more flush you are, the better cap your, your cap is going to look. Uh, sometimes uh, you can't tell how much under flush you are and you're going to want to cap it and your, might, your cap might start looking like this, uh, a little bit uneven, but it doesn't mean you can't do it. You can actually, so you can actually cap it slightly under flush or perfectly flush. Now remember how I said before that if they let you grind, then go ahead and grind any imperfections that you have. 
this is how you're learning, right? This is how you learn, and so on. So if the company doesn't want you to do any grinding, then hey, I guess we gotta be extra uh, careful, right? All right, so ladies and gentlemen, now we are done with our fill. Nicely flush and ready to cap. So remember you can cap it under flush, slightly under flush, or perfectly flush. Now if you're allowed to use a grinder, go ahead and grind it, grind the high spots, have it nice and flat, nice and even, so you can have a good looking cap. One technique that I like to do is I always like to grind a line uh, on my cap. Now, if they don't want you to use it or well, then go ahead and follow your bevel. This is why you're not covering your bevel whenever you're doing that, that last fill. Now, we're gonna go ahead and start capping it. Now, I have a guy line in there. What I'm gonna do when I cap it, you're gonna have your circle, you're gonna have your puddle. I want you to put your puddle right in the center of that guy line. All right, make sure that you're looking on top of that puddle and watch watch it bite into that top part of your guideline. Watch it eat into it, okay? So you're gonna see it biting into it. So follow that guideline, go nice and straight. Try to go uh, at the proper speed, at a proper speed, don't rush it. Don't, don't be bouncing around or any of that. Don't change your angle, keep the same angle all the way out. Always check for lack of fusion. Make sure that you're biting into your own, uh, your own bevel, the guideline that you placed in there. So double check it, make sure there's no porosity, uh, no lack of fusion, no inclusions and so on. So be very careful. Once you are satisfied, right, then we can start grinding our next guy lines. All right, same concept. We're keeping it nice and simple, right? So we're gonna drag it again, the same method, same way. We're gonna follow that guy line, nice and even and nice and straight, same angle. What you don't wanna do here is cut any corners and you're trying to rush this. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so there you have it. We just finished this 1G stick out on a one inch plate. It's a long process, it takes time. So remember, do it carefully, step by step. Don't cut any corners and you'll do it right. Nothing is perfect, ladies and gentlemen. Just remember that. Practice, practice, practice. Now, check out our store, welllife.com, all right? Check out our store. So we got plenty of stuff in there, good stuff, uh, quality stuff. So remember, uh, use my discount code. If you want that 10% off, welding fly duck. So ladies and gentlemen, I'll see you next time for some more knowledge. Hoorah, Semper Fi. Sky.